Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, June the 7th, 2014. And um, after a few cool um, days, cool and breezy days, we're having um, a warm day, but still uh, the humidity is not that high. Beautiful weekend, mostly dry, but you know how the um, the weather broadcasters are, the weather forecasters, they're, um, they're not always accurate. Most of the time they're not. As uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said last night on a video on uh, Facebook. Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Day-to-day -day weather, it's kind of hard to be accurate. The um, the right wing. Lord, I hate him. The right wing fundamentalists on Fox News were hammering him about uh, about the the age of the Earth and the mm -hmm. universe and all that jazz. And yeah, they gave, they were giving him a hard time. I was yep. reading. I was reading about it. But you know what? I'm not shocked that they're doing it. Doesn't surprise me at all. I expect it from idiots with no facts. But anyway, exactly. Let me get the formalities over with. Mm -hmm. I will now. Before I begin, before we begin with this week's show, I will now pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle that I got in Newport, Rhode Island back in the 80s. Welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship newsletter censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Okay, my back is killing me. Uh, well, as long as you, you get comfortable, yeah, I know you got something for your back. Uh, sorry to hear that. Um, welcome, everybody, to Uncensored, Hard-Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And we're coming to you live and recorded from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And, uh, you know, every time I get in my car mm -hmm. and I observe the driving habits of people in general, I can see how society is getting more dumbed down by the uh, week, month, year. People are just in la la land, you know. They're 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 somewhere else. They're uh, they're careless. They're they don't yield. They're rude. They like to tailgate you. <coughs> well, there was a huge accident on the turnpike. Yes, and poor Tracy Morgan. Tra I like him, Tracy Morgan, comedian Funny. Tracy Morgan. Six He's, cars. Six cars. He's who tracked the trailers. He's in critical condition. Yeah. We we wish him. Care. First of all, we wish him not only survival first, but a speedy recovery to, to comedian Tracy Morgan. Um, our hearts go out to you. And um, let me let me begin. Well, it's the beginning of the show, right? <laughs> I might as well begin, right? What am I going to do? End it? Eleven bells. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Begin the begin. I was singing begin the begin. What's a begin? I have no idea. <laughs> I only know it begins. You know, not only did they have, they have really funny songs back then during the big band era, but they had the most ridiculous, ridiculously stupid commercial jingles back then. My grandmother used to tell me they were so idiotic. Okay, let me begin. Okay, the FDA, our wonderful uh, Federal Food and Drug Administration, finally admits that U.S. chicken meat contains yeah. cancer-causing arsenic. Boy. They finally came clean. I'm sure that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as what our uh, wonderful uh, supermarket foods in America contain. And I'm, sh I'm sure there's many other toxins. toxins. You know, uh, trans fats, hydrogenated oils, which is that, uh, sugar, but that's nothing. There's, there's a lot of toxins what about leukemia? to do us in. 
Oh, leukemia. Roos, I... uh, R-O-U-S. Uh, I believe that was Gerson who found that all chickens had leukemia. I mean, it's not just it's not just the preservatives and chemicals to prolong shelf life, so the poor uh, 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 American food industry can and, you know doesn't lose much of its profits. Heaven forbid. But it's not only that. It's it's the many pesticides from Monsanto found uh, on produce that's ending up in women's mother's milk that they found. And in this case, you're, they start you off with arsenic. You know, uh, naturally they give the chickens hormones. Well, remember, hormones, antibiotics. Yeah. The Clear Sky Amendments under <laughs> George W. Bush allowed for more arsenic in the air. Remember that. Well, any any time a Republican is in charge, you you're going to have total deregulation, which means they can lie to you, they can cheat you, companies they can rob you, they can poison you. And of course, today now they want to put in all kinds of treaties and etc. Wherein, if you have the absolute gall to, in one way or another, stop them from selling a product or something and making a profit, you are responsible for paying them what they lost. Even though they're they're unethical crooks. They're correct. But we have we have uh, legalized bribery to our politicians in our laws. So that's no big deal, making uh, corruption into a legal thing in America. Well, I was happy to read an article. Uh, he's a congressman. I, I think his last name might be Grayson. Alan Harry. Grayson. Alan Grayson uh, helped to pass a shield law, which meant that a American journalists cannot be put in jail and prison for refusing to disclose their, their sources, source. <laughs> which is actually very important. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that is supposed to be uh, protected by the First Amendment. Yeah. Well, it, but of course, you know, with uh, George Bush and uh, Obama, you know, rewriting the Constitution, you, you know, know. You know, that kind what of... What the hell is safe? When you think about it, that, that sort of protects the whistleblowers to a certain extent, too, because a, a, a journalist that does uh, a, a, an article or documentary that exposes the evils in America, and, and, and he does not have to get, disclose his sources, Therefore, he cannot be jailed. That's very similar to whistleblower. Oh, he can be jailed. Well, they said they can't. Well, maybe this particular law deals with that part of it. Right. But they can, as of today, put someone in jail for not disclosing their sources. Yeah, but this, this specifically says if a, if a journalist well, does not the, disclose. That's, that's the law that he's doing now. Yeah. But I'm saying under the laws that we have right now, they can put you away. Yeah. Until until the shield law and, takes effect. Right. And, of course, today we have a very big problem. Yeah. Wherein we can't tell the difference between a innocent whistleblower and a terrorist. A, duh. Yeah, a patriotic American hero whistleblower like Edward Snowden compared to a real terrorist. They can't tell the difference. That's correct. In fact, in Time Magazine... They today, don't want to tell the difference. That's true. In Time Magazine today, they, they interviewed an ex-CIA jumbaloni and he, he called Snowden, you know, a uh, that he should be prosecuted or whatever. Oh, ex -CIA. yeah. Like like John the CIA Carroll. is filled with disgusting, corrupt, beastly people, and they have the nerve to tell you what's the difference between yeah. a good guy and a bad guy. Well, Seth MacFarlane, Seth MacFarlane does an outstanding job of exposing the CIA in his cartoon American Dad, yeah. uh, uh, showing you know really <clears throat> uh, demonizing them in a funny way, but it's not so funny. Of course not. It's not funny at all. The damage they have done around the world is pathetic. 
Well, the United, the reputation of the United States around the world is pathetic. Yeah. But and, one, uh, and once these things keep coming out and coming out, it just gets worse and worse. Because, in fact, wait, last night, I believe there was on Facebook, uh, a story about Chiquita Banana. What's up? Chiquita Banana was giving mula money, eh? Sclerora or whatever, Scalora. to terrorist organizations. Really? To protect their business. In Colombia! Well, yeah, the, there are, yeah, there are, there are, everybody's on the take in these Latin American countries. They, uh, Billy Morrow says to me, uh, if you're in a Latin American country and you want to find something that's, uh, that you shouldn't be doing or you shouldn't be getting, just ask a cop. And he'll, and he'll, he'll tell you. And you slip him a little money and he'll, yeah, his hand is out. He'll hook you up. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Mexico. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. But it wasn't that the perfect prototype uh, uh, conservative crony capitalist model for G.W. Bush? I mean, I know people that are Colombian, and Colombia is um, is horrible. I mean, you know, if you're poor, you basically die. You know, there's no there's no Medicaid, no nothing. There's no welfare. There's nothing. Unemployment, and then and then if you get a job, they make you work. A, tremendously long hours on salary for for a minuscule pay and yeah. they make you work long hours there's no overtime pay or, or nothing well that's what they want to happen in America no labor laws no uh, charity care Medicaid yeah. like I said if you're, if you're if you're poor you gotta pay out of pocket and uh, to go to the doctor you have to bring your own uh, you have Chicken. to buy your own syringes if you need an injection you know, but you uh, can pay him with a chicken. Pay him with a chicken? Yeah. No, no. They, if you, they don't. You don't have insurance. Yeah. They're, Talk they're, they're, they're worse than uh, Hackensack University Medical Center because uh -huh. they're, they're like, um, it's a, it's a prestigious big hospital, and uh, the first words out of their mouth is, "You got any insurance?" Yeah, I think, I think right now it's cost you ten dollars to park in their parking lot. Ten? Ten bucks, baby. But but if you're uh, if you're there on business, you might get validated. Yeah, you they, get you'll validated. Va they get validated. Yeah. But ten dollars if you're a visitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yep, glad yep, you yep, brought yep, that yep. up. How greedy can they? Very greedy. Hey. <laughs> be. How greedy can they be? Very. They are really greedy. I I, I can't stand. I despise the uh, American healthcare system. They are so. This whole. As well, we should. Crony capitalism is the devil's economics, uh -huh. as opposed to the system they have in in Europe, Northern Europe. All right, moving on, moving on, moving along. The state of North Carolina, North Carolina Republicans. You might as well say they're forcing the poisoning uh, uh, of its residents by uh, now. They, they will arrest you if you uh, blow the whistle and expose the companies that are fracking and poisoning the water. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, even mention what kind of toxins are entering your drinking water supply, you will be arrested. It, it, that law is in full effect. So in a way, the North Carolina, well, no, no, not in a way. In, in, in reality, North Carol Carolina Republicans are forcing the poisoning of its residents just like you you cannot be poor and homeless in North Carolina because it's illegal to be homeless and uh, and broke and uh, it's just another excuse to have you work as free slave labor in a privatized prison they are ass kissers for business it's as simple as that but why is it so difficult for Republican voters to understand what their party is I don't know. It boggles my mind. I, I'm even. I'm. I'm more shocked at the fact that New Jersey re-elected Chris Christie after four years of 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 this tyrant, you know, this ogre, and they re-elect him. And and, yeah. and a, a woman that that a good woman like Barbara Bono, her own Democrats 
Traitors. Traitors, sellouts, stabbed her in the back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and because uh, I hear Christie got a substantial amount of the vote. That's correct. So, yeah. Democratic vote. Yeah, right, exactly. Yes. Now, how about this? North Carolina says we're going to make money at your expense. Correct. We're going to poison you. Correct. And you can't say nothing or do Correct. anything about it. And if you get sick and drop dead, Tough. it's just t too damn bad. That's the way the crab cake crumbles. It's your own fault. Yeah. Well, no, it's not your own fault. You're just a vic you're just a, a victim. But it's your own fault because you are not wealthy. You are not oh. with us at the le elites. You are lazy. Whatever the problem is, words, it's it, your fault. If you're not financially independent, you're you're lazy. That's correct. Uh, this is assuming there are plenty of jobs and opportunity in America. You will never be a plutocrat, my son. My son, it, I think it is an excuse to uh, cull the herd, to kill off the poor, and it is an excuse to find more slave labor for privatized prisons so corporations can can increase their profits uh, by not ha paying uh, salaries, which, in, tax, which is tax, which is tax deductible anyway. Yes, yes, wages are tax deductible, all in the, and the fringe benefits. <laughs> Etc. The, the companies lose uh, nothing. They lose nothing. This is bizarro world we're living in. It folks. is bizarro because you know why? Why? They don't get. They don't get the. If you pay your workers, right? The uh, the uh, the Ford idea. If you pay your workers Henry good, Ford. Yeah. Henry Ford idea. If you pay your workers good, they buy your product. If you don't pay them well, they can't buy your products. Well, in the case of Walmart, they pay them so impoverishly, I mean, so so uh, low, that uh, these people have no choice but to only shop at Walmart. Walmart, too, is in trouble for bribery. In Mexico. Mexico! Putting all the uh, little people out of business, etc with their bribery to the right people, etc. Well, we are going to, um, let me see, we're going to discuss Sam Walton. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of which one to do last. No, I'll, I'll do this one first. I'll, I'll save Sam Walton for last. Hey, it's Sammy boy. Yeah, well, you know, Costco, gotta love him. I was, uh, you know, they're paying like, even though Bill Morrow doesn't believe it, they're paying $21 an mm -hmm. hour with benefits. Mm -hmm. And uh, they show that they care about their employees, whereas Wal Walmart can care less about their employees. You know, and, 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 and Costco sales are, are yeah. booming. Well, now, as long as, speaking of like, like Chiquito Banana, as long as you prevent the big boys from interfering with your business in one way or another, you will be able to make money and pay your workers properly, like Costco. But if Walmart and the other boys get together and want to do damage to Costco, they can. And there's the problem, because these companies do not like competition. Yeah, like okay. Vince McMahon it's all in, the w, in the WWE. About competition. You don't like competition either. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially they can do damage, especially since they have the uh, the right wing Congress in their hip pocket. You know, not only the right wing, they got the Democrats too. They're all corporatists. Well, it, it's Costco's right to treat their employees very well. Look at Bill Clinton out there the they other can't. day with. Uh, 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 the, the, uh, uh, on this uh, trip that he's on, uh, uh, the benefits of, oh, capitalism is the best system we got, Bill, even with its problems. Bill, and Bill it's, Clinton, Bill Clinton is, promote, yeah. is promoting this. So Bill Clinton is still a corporatist. That's correct. And that means there's, and a, so is his wife. there's a good chance Hillary Clinton is still yes. a corporatist. That's correct. 
Are you kidding me? No, I'm not Capitalism kidding. is the devil's economics. It's, it's Satan's tool in the end times. Oh my gosh. But anyway, uh, ugh. you know, Costco can choose to treat its employees choose. well. Choose. It's the operative word. Choose to treat his, right. its employees very well. Now, there are certain independent fast food owners. There's one in Michigan that decided to, to, to implement the right way of thinking. And he's mm -hmm. paying his employees $15 an hour and giving them benefits because he decided to do so. Mm -hmm. and, and like I told Bill Morrow, if somebody goes to work with enthusiasm and loves their job and respects their boss, you can get more productivity out of a happy camper like that. Well, of course. A happy worker is a more productive worker. If the worker, that's why uh, uh, worker co-ops are best for the future. Because when you uh, become part of something, you work for it. You want it yeah. to benefit. You want to benefit right. it. As opposed to like a local McDonald's I know of, where, you know, that not only do they pay you crap and feed you crap, they, you know, if you want to, if you tell them you have a wedding to go to or you, you need special uh. time off, they'll, they'll refuse. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll put you on the schedule. They're mean. Uh, uh, you know, with a job that doesn't pay much. And on top of that, Wendy's and McDonald's, they found a chemical in their food that is used in making silly putty. You know the toy, silly putty is like Play-Doh. What about that uh, uh, crap that's in their french fries? Uh, somebody put it up there on Facebook last night. I'm I didn't get a chance to read it. I don't know what yeah. is in there. I mean, look at the pet food article. They're taking dead cats and dogs ah! that are sick, that were sick or died of old age, or died, and they're grinding them up like you remember mad cow disease when they were feeding the cattle cow. Because they, were, because they were grinding up old and diseased cattle, giving the cattle that because, so they don't have to spend money on, on, on the proper feed. And, and the cows got mad cow disease because guess what? Cows are herbivores. They're not carnivores. Well, in this case, they're taking everything and anything and grinding it up and putting it in pet food. I'm talking about probably... Pate. Once it's pate. Yeah. All, all all canned cat food today is pate. Hey, it could be anything when it's pate. Of course, it could be roadkill. It could be. Hey, same thing with with the uh, McDonald's hamburgers. You know, it has ammonia in it. Has a little worm meat in it. As uh, as a, a a meat that's not approved, inspected properly. You know, it could be a meat with an abscess or a tumor in it or a cancer. They grind it right up. But in this case, just picture it. You go and you buy supermarket, nationally advertised, cheapo dog food, and you're giving it to your dog, and there's a possibility that there's ground up dog, cat, or God knows what else in there, and you're giving it to your pet. And, uh, and this is all part of one reason alone, in my opinion. Deregulation by Republicans. No. And Democrats, please. D huh? Blame them both. Why? Some Democrats were for deregulation? Of course. Uh, read my new article coming out. Jimmy Carter started the whole slide to deregulation. Not Reagan? No, Reagan continued it. James Carter began with rail, trucking, Airlines, communication, etc., well, etc. So, in other words, what you're saying is the Democrats of modern days are nothing like FDR. That's correct. Nothing. A FDR called the wealthy plutocrats economic royalists. Well, just, just like the old Republicans, like Teddy Roosevelt and uh, and Abe Lincoln. Well, Abe Lincoln is not so innocent. I, th I think he ordered the, the killing of uh, Native Americans, like a mass shooting by the U.S. Army. You know, there's some know. there's some skeletons in his closet too. But, I don't know. All I know but is capital. What Bill Clinton was saying 
is wrong he about put, Abe Lincoln put aside uh, the uh, habeas corpus during the Civil War for a time. Yeah. For a time. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, definitely uh, the proof is in the pudding and capitalism has shown a lot of evil proof <laughs> in that pudding. Uh, yeah, but you got to understand that our elected representatives are for business. They are not for the people. Only when it's they clear and simple. Only when they run for office. Then they pretend to be for the people. I did. Uh, did I mention? Was it last week? No, it couldn't have been last week. It was the uh, I've told you on Wednesday. The guy, I believe, he's in California. Uh, the Republican. He lost the uh, election, and he knows that he has to uh, uh, appeal to Latino voters, etc. So he legally changed his name to Cesar Chavez. But he's not Latin? No! But did, 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 did his his real name is Fister. Fister, so he can fist fuck everybody? So, uh, well, he is fucking everybody. Fist, That's for get sure. it? Hold on, hold on. I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> So, so he is uh, <laughs> he is uh, <laughs> going to run, of course, as a Democrat now. Well, I hope. And Caesar Chavez. Now, if you go to his website, you will see pictures up there, and you will see people with signs and a "Viva Chavez, Viva Chavez." The pictures are from the days of the real Caesar Chavez. Oh, he's a phony. Man. He's a phony baloney and a disgusting person. But it points up one a, thing about Republicans. He's a Zionist, maybe. They are interested only in becoming elected. Period. Gaining the power. Not the. Not doing anything for the people. This or no, anything nothing, positive. But this is how getting the power. This is how politics is in third world countries. It's, exactly. It's, like a tota it's a totalitarian government. Exactly. It's completely and totally corrupt. You have exactly. no middle class. Exactly. You have the poor which get poorer and the rich would, which get richer by ill-gotten gains. And the plutocrats want that here. Yes. Don't forget it. And they, they want a worldwide plutocracy. No, they don't. They want themselves in charge. If you've got a worldwide plutocracy, that means no. a lot of people no, no, are no, 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 no. plutocrats. I mean, I mean the, the, the wealthiest corporations, the wealthiest people they want to be in, in the charge. world want yeah. to be in charge. That's yeah. what I meant. But uh, to become you know, a plutocrat, you know, you have to be wealthy. Yeah, well... So if uh, the world is uh, looking for everybody to be a plutocrat, come on, that ain't going to happen. You know, uh, uh, th this is an assumption that the... The country, the U.S. and the world is really ruled by a few. That's correct. You never see, uh, you ever see uh, Susie Orman? The uh, yeah. Sometimes her advice, woman. sometimes her advice is uh, not practical pr for her the average is, person. Her advice is crap. Number one. But here's the point. People like her. What is she worth? Maybe a couple mil. Whatever. I'm sure she's a millionaire, multi. Now, the question that should be asked of people like her is to pay more how taxes. How come you ain't as rich as Bill Gates? Bill Gates. If you know so much, Bill Gates screwed, et cetera, Bill Gates screwed more people over. <laughs> the point is that only a few people. There are. Uh, I, I, I can't uh, give you the real number uh, uh, until I, I'd have to look at my notes. Uh, there's something like 1,200 and some billionaires in the whole world in the whole world seven billion people and there's only 1200 and some billionaires in the world what does that tell you it tells you that not everybody can make those monies but they all have a different story I don't care about their story I'm telling you not everyone can be Bill Gates well obviously not or can do what Bill Gates did to found his company, build the company, etc. Not ev that is not available to everyone. And pass up Mr. Slim in Mexico in in worth whatever. But the point is, no, it's did. only for the few. This idea in America 
that we can all become rich is baloney. Oh, the uh, the prosperity preachers and the Tony Robbins of the world. Yeah. That that you know, uh, well, it's, it's, ins so, inspirational speakers. Is Tony Robbins involved in the financial aspect of it? I don't think so. He's more no. uh, more in the spiritual and uh, positive thinking and all that kind of crap. I don't know. Yeah, but if you have no opportunities and no breaks in life. And you're flat broke. You could be, you could be positive. You could, you could be sweeping a warehouse floor with a with a push broom but and be. How? I'm a positive thinker. You could be sweeping. You could be using that push broom for the rest of your life, saying, "Ah, I have potential." That that Pinocchio guy said, "I have potential." All right. What is that gonna? Is that gonna make your employer? <clears throat> uh, uh, give you in a promotion to get you out of the, the a warehouse. A gentleman the other day was making a commencement speech at a at a high school or something that I happened to overhear, and he started out with, "You are not special. That's what, you are not. That's what Bill exceptional. That's what Bill Morrow keeps on saying." You're, you're, you're misle they're misleading our children. Exactly. Making them look like, oh, you're all winners. That's a bunch of horseshit. You're all special. You're No. You have to, there are people who are not meant to be at the top of their game. Well, the you have to have losers in order to make the winner a winner. Well, not only that. It's, uh, like I, I point out, since the inception of this country, 90% of people have failed to move up financially. I'm glad you brought in that this up. Country. 90%. 90%. Well, it, you know, here's another how, how many people can get to, um, to own land where oil is produced and become standard oil? Right. How many? So, the point of it all is that these things are open to only a few. Out that of is, seven billion people in the world. That's very true. You know? And, 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 and this idea of everybody being a winner and special right. sure uh, screwed the uh, uh, disabled people back in the 80s. Oh, right? well, they, you know, they have, they have a problem with their own, you know, the disabled they people. They felt guilty. They're out of, they Whatever they the, are, they're out there with Special Olympics. They're out there with climbing Mount Everest in a wheelchair. Come on! They, 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 the Republicans um, succeeded in laying a big guilt trip on the disabled because they were sitting home collecting money and they probably said, handouts, 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 mm. handouts. Got to be productive, productive. Uh, I should have wrote it down. This, this, uh, a great author or uh, somebody who very held in very high esteem said, "Why must a person always be productive? What's wrong with just doing what you enjoy doing in life and doing it well because you love it? I mean, this the idea of productivity and being productive." You know, it's, it should not be written in stone, you know, it's like... Well, that's one of the problems we have with our economy right now, because the economy as structured must keep growing. Must well, keep growing. that's capitalism. That's capitalism. It, it, enough, enough, is, enough is never enough. We can reach a point yeah. where there is no more growing yeah. to sustain whatever they want to sustain. I mean, how many refrigerators can you continue to buy? Right. There comes a point, a saturation point. That's why we get into these recessions. Where the inventory sits in the warehouses because nobody's buying. That's a recession. So, you know, I mean, look. Let's look at it biblically. Adam was put into a garden. He was to dress and keep the garden. That was his productivity. It's not a lot to ask. Yeah. You know? But once they were thrown out of the garden, him and, uh, and Eve, mm -hmm. this is when they had to toil. This is why Republicans 
in their heart of hearts believe that work is a punishment. For them? See? Not for them. No, sir. They oh. want to be in control. Oh, they, they, but they don't work. No. But they want, you see them in Congress right now, right? They want, do they do any work? Yeah, they want the people, That's the little guy to work, to help increase their profits. It's exploitation. That's right. Okay. That's what it is. All right, we must and they move. want you to love it. Love it? Fuck yeah. them. Love they it. want you to love it. Fuck them. People yeah. are going to get roll out of bed early in the morning for, for minimum wage and love it? Go fuck yourself. Here, Republicans. I'm sorry, I usually scratch the middle of my forehead. Fuck you. Pay your taxes and shut up and stop whining. <laughs> Pay your fair share in taxes. Fair share. Yes. All right, moving along. Moving. Chris Christie. Hey, hey. Our, uh... Esteemed. High esteemed. Yeah, especially when he farts from all that food. A lot of, lot of esteem coming out of there. I don't know. He's got a personal trainer, you know. Because he doesn't look like he uh, lost any weight from that stomach stapling. Yeah, those 30 pounds, first 30, and I don't know what the hell has happened since. Well, guess what? I interviewed some state workers of different sorts, some cops. Really? And when it comes to cops, teachers, and state employees, they all hate his guts. Of course. How, how he got reelected is another talk show. Ah, it's beyond me. But they hate him. They hate him. Why did they reelect him? I don't know. Anyway, Chris Christie is taking 2.4 billion dollars from pensions after giving 3.3 billion dollars to business. He's still giving a lot of taxpayers money and 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 money that that belongs to the little guy, the mainstream New Jerseyan, to his rich buddies. Bingo, what's the difference? It's been going on since the 80s. Just give it but they don't have money for food stamps, and they don't have money unemployment insurance. for unemployment insurance, and yeah. they don't have money for Planned Parenthood, and they don't have money for uh, for for just welfare to help people that you know can't find a job. Oh, they have no money for the veterans, ah. the veterans hospitals. They have no money for the food stamps for the veterans and their families who who laid who got their legs blown off and arms and or whatever in Iraq and Afghanistan. They have no money to help them. And you know that all goes back to cutting. And you know who the cutters are, don't you? They got money to, to give to themselves and their rich friends. Mm -hmm. But they don't have money for the, for the people who make up America, the meat and potatoes of America, the true consumers, the voters, uh, the people who... who we the who people fought, fought and died for for them. They don't. They don't have money for them. But they have plenty of money for their rich buddies and themselves. You know, the army to them are just a bunch of doofuses to go in and protect business in in, in, in countries and stuff. Never that is. young people of the United States. Young people, young people of the United States. I know you're forced to uh, sign up for the draft. No draft. It's volunteer. Oh, it's volunteer? Yes. Oh, okay. The forcing comes about when they say, hey, we're going to give you $40,000 for college. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Never. Uh, listen, I was bullshitted to by, by a recruiter. Never, ever believe what a recruiter tells you. Yeah. It's like what uh, the late George Carlin said, and uh, I think others like him. I never believe what my government tells me. Well, you better not. I think Jesse Ventura said it because too. Because it ain't your government, number one. And, and uh, the great Frank Zappa had the same way of thinking. Another uh, brilliant man mm. that passed away. Um, but anyway, here is the, the cream of the crop. Cream pie. Creme de la creme. Cream pie. <laughs> oh, boy. A federal judge ordered Sam Walton, who's uh, CEO in... Uh, uh, Predominant owner of Walmart, right? I don't know about predominant. He's one of the heirs. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think the Okay. Are. Federal judge ordered Sam Walton to pay back wages with penalties for cheating for cheating his workers out of minimum wage. Yay! Walmart cut the checks, but Walton told 
is employees, I'll fire anyone who cashes the check. Nice. nice. So not only do you have the, the honor and pleasure of get, receiving minimum wage from Walmart, you have the honor and pleasure of being stiffed, stiffed isn't, out of that out of that minimum wage. Isn't it nice to have the cooperation of your workers? And if you don't like it, Sam Walton wants to fire you. you if, if you spend, <laughs> if you cut the check and receive the money that's due you because you worked for Sam Walton, you know you left home, you drove to work, and you put in hours of work for Sam Walton to help him get richer, yeah. you're entitled to a pay under the law. You're entitled to pay because mm -hmm. you're not a slave. Well, he's giving you shit to begin with, but he also wants to take the shit away from you, and if you try to get your, to cash your shitty check, he wants to fire you from your shitty job. And guess what? What? He can do it. How come you always say these people can get away with this? Because they can. But we don't Who have we don't have slavery. Come? It's the it's the law that you get you have to get paid to work. So what? 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 They can pay what? A dollar? They pay you a dollar for work? Well, people can An say hour. people can say fuck you. No, they can't. Yes, they could. This I, is what I I'm just said it. I just said um, it. How many times have I said the problem, one of the problems, the flaws in capitalism and our setup in government? What am I going to do with a dollar? We depend on the private sector for our survival. What am I going to do with a dollar an hour? You tell me. I didn't say you had to go to work. I said the force is there to force you to go to work. Aren't you understanding what he, I'm saying? He stiffed. This is like no, a, forget about Walton. This is like this a is, pro. This, this is, is like bigger. a pro wrestling uh, promoter stiffing his uh, his workers. He yeah, stiffed his employees. You're just talking employees. about an individual situation. I'm talking about the whole setup of our form of capitalism. I agree. No, you don't agree because you just said that. Uh, I'm you not can, defending you can tell him. Tell him to go bullshit. Fuck I'm not. Off. I'm not, def I'm not you defending. You can't do him. that because you need to survive. Now, where are you going to? How are you going to survive? I I want. To be compensated, not me personally, but me as a, as a, let's say I'm an average Joe six pack American. I want to be compensated for my services. Exactly. Compensation. But compensation. It ain't set up like that. Well, then fuck. Them. It's set up so that the businesses have all the power. Yeah. Well, I have the power to get my car and go home as an average American. Exactly, and, and, and starve to death. And, and stick my middle finger out as I'm driving home. And starve to death. No, go get, you go get another job. That's Where? Uh, no, you have to go working for some other company. Co Costco. Who, who's in charge. Costco. <laughs> you see, the point, the point is that the system is the problem. Not maybe an individual company. Absolutely. The system. Well, right now, Walmart is a top banana because of ill-gotten gains of course and uh, he what, who becomes he who, he who hastens to become rich yeah. shall not be innocent yeah he who who haste makes haste to become rich shall not be innocent that's in the Bible that's correct well There's a lot of things the about Waltons it. are far from innocent anyway thou shalt not bribe is in the Bible too and thou shalt not uh, charge my people uh, usury interest. Yeah, and you know, wow, they say, like the banks. But me. isn't it funny that all these so-called Christians are doing all these bad things that are not in the Bible? You know what some and of they the, claim that they are religious. You know what some of the banks are doing with the fees? Like, you know, like um, you have um, like what. Uh, with your checking account, if, uh, like in other words, I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, uh, credit card, like like there's, there's a late fee for credit yeah. card payments. But there's also another fee that people are not aware of, and I heard this on the news. There's another fee where if you wait until the very last day to make the payment, they, they're penalizing people for making the payment on the last day that, you know, before you're officially late. 
So well, there's an extra fee to throw in there for not paying early enough. And you there's, see, another, there's another fee. See how what blood suckers they are? Well, of course, we know this. What so the hell? We've got to change listen, it. Listen. If somebody, if, if, uh, what's the, what's the horse that's running today? California. California Chrome. If Cal And he's going to win the Triple Crown. Oh, I'm sorry. I've said it here. Triple Crown. Oh, let me salute California Chrome with the lucky shillelagh. I wish you luck, California Chrome. We're long overdue for a Triple Crown winner. Yeah. And, uh, I wish you the best with my lucky shillelagh. But, but the thing is, if... Seattle, Seattle Slough. Seattle Slough. If Secretariat. Secretariat. Yeah. If California Chrome wins by a nose, and they, they play the instant replay over a few times, and that's it, he won. He won by a nose, but he won. You still won by a nose. If you make your credit card payment on the last day, at a certain time, you made your credit card payment. What is this extra fee to throwing in there? Isn't it funny that they get away with all this stuff? And there is another fee, as I've been trying to say. What happens if you have a late charge? Right. They jack up your APR. I, yeah, they definitely do. That's correct. I had with Chase, and I'm going to name names, I had with Chase Bank Platinum Card, I had like 3.9% uh, very low interest. Very because low. the post office was a little sluggish that month and I was late by a day, they took my 3.9% and they jacked it up to over 20 some odd percent. Yeah. I lost my 3.9%. Mind you, I've always paid on time for years. What was the... Uh, for years. What was the and that's what really sent me over the edge. What was huh? the date on the check? You mean like when, when, the, when it was cashed? Was the date on the check before the due date? I don't remember. Well, it better have been. Or otherwise, I then that's why you got penalized. The point is, if the check date was before the due date, then you might have a case against well, What's to stop them but from leaving my check? Where are you going to get the money to sue them? Well, they, it, it's, it, it's, a false, it's a false accusation if my check... I said, did I hear what I said? Where are you going to get the money to sue them? If you have a good case, uh, you ever hear of... Um, contingency. Contingency. But if they will probably not contingent on those kind of cases. Well, what's to stop the bank, Chase Bank, from letting your check sit on the desk before... Oh, they can't do that. They, uh, the date on the check. If it's before the due date, then there's no late fee. There's not nothing late. You're not late. Yeah, I, I happen to. Yeah, I put it in the mail, and it just happened to. Yeah, so if the mail get there a little bit late. Yeah, if the post office delivers it, once there it's in their hands, it's their responsibility. The post office. But if they do do it late, and uh, Chase wants to make a deal out, a big deal out of it. They can do that, but they'd be wrong. And but unfortunately, mm -mm. you will not be able to seek justice because no. you don't have money to sue them. The, the uh, customer service of Chase, they could care less what, what, how good my record was in That's the past. Correct. My past record meant nothing to them. They have no, nothing but contempt for their customers, just like a lot of companies that are deregulated have contempt for their customers. Automobile insurance companies. Crooks. Are another bunch of crooks, but supposing you've been with a, uh, a, a company for 40 years, you never had a problem. They don't want you anymore because they know you're going to have a problem sooner or later. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the problem with this. With, I've been with you for how many years? We don't care. They only care. We know that you are going to have a problem soon. Yeah. All those companies on TV, Progressive, Geico, They're all uh, liars. Uh, 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 I had them all, uh, the general, I, I got quotes from all of them and they were all expensive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the, don't believe that stupid lizard with the, uh, the British accent.
Yeah, well, now even he was <coughs> high. He now was high. E insurance is going to give you a quote in seven and a half minutes. I got an. I got a quote from them. It was high. It oh. was high. It oh. was high. And um, <coughs> eventually, I found a good one. You know, but but they were all the famous ones were high. So even when you when they have advertisements, and they try to be cute and funny and comical, and guess what? They're lying to you. What? Most of these insurance companies, something they pay out five percent of what they bring in in claims. So ninety-five percent of their money is not paid out in claims. Right. It's invested. Probably goes to wages and stuff of this nation, right. administration. They're making money. Mm -hmm. They're not losing anything. They don't have to raise prices sky high. But they can and they do. Read. That's the problem. You know, even that legal Zoom, uh, you know, you, you, they tell you you can save money on the... <laughs> Legal fees. Uh, Four hundred dollars for a will. I got I got a quote from them on something. It was the same price as a local lawyer, lawyer yeah. with his shingle hanging out. You know. Anyway, let's sink our teeth into these readings because we are very late. Speaking of Governor Christie, so Governor Christie says your story was irresponsible. Uh, this gentleman is talking about a story that appeared in the record, our uh, local newspaper. Of course, it's always someone else's fault. He says extra responsibilities merit more pay. They well, should. as a teacher, my husband had plenty of responsibilities. Yet our governor sees him and other educators as being responsible for New Jersey's fiscal fiasco. Oh, heaven, heaven, heaven forbid other professionals should be compensated for their work. That's great. Only, only lawyers, prosecutors, whatever, like Christie, should be compensated. Christie is withholding payments into the state pension system. Never mind that my spouse paid his share for 34 years. Christie delays property relief for seniors while giving his staffers raises. It's like Social Security. That's not a handout at all. Averaging 23%. Well, it is to Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan is just a, a douchebag faced, greedy, selfish son of a bitch. But he's got support from his Republican back. And, uh, and, and uh, Scott Walker of Wisconsin. There are, Got re-elected, my friend. Yeah, despite the fact uh -huh. that Wisconsin's supposed to be a blue state, and and there are eighty thousand poor, with poor people in um, Wisconsin without any health insurance because he refused mm -hmm. Obamacare mm -hmm. in his state. Is that true, right? Yeah. So therefore, there was about yeah about eighty thousand poor people have no health insurance. Christie's hypocrisy knows no bounds. The governor is not a leader, he's a bully. And we should be ashamed that this is who represents New Jersey. A dictator. To the rest of the country. It's is it any wonder we are a laughing stock? Well, the, uh, the reality show um, Jersey Shore made us a laughing stock. Also. And uh, all the stereotypical, you know, uh, Hollywood uh, uh, material for comedy and movies, whatever. But Christie, that's the icing on the cake. No pun intended. I mean, that's the icing on the Krispy Kreme. Christie. Continuing <laughs> with continuing. Governor Christie. Yes. The year has been rough so far for Governor Christie. Oh, poor, poor thing. But now a bright spot. Christie accepted a Father of the Year Award. That's the only award he can probably get. At a ceremony in New York City on Wednesday. Really? 
in New York. I wouldn't give him. It. I hope the mayor didn't hand it to him. Probably well, did. <laughs> de Blasio. De I wouldn't hand him any award. <laughs> he uh, he uh, he's probably father. He's father of the year because he's rich, you know, and uh, 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 he can hug all his kids. You know, he can keep them warm with all that blubber, you know, and he's uh he's uh, you you can do a lot for kids when you got big bucks. Today is really recognition for the best thing I get to do with my life, Christie said. Which is, make money, right? I get recognized and criticized and praised for all kinds of other things, but the most important thing I get to do every day is to be a father Afasha. to my children. Afaja, like Mr. Gold member on Austin Powers. Yeah, Afaja. Oh, oh. Christie was one of five honorees at the annual award ceremony by the National Committee. The National Father's Day Committee decided that Chris Christie was Father's Day of the Year. Now, who did what? What? <laughs> who did he uh, uh, schmooze with? Rub elbows with? to well, get this award on a national level. Here is one. Including NFL Hall of Famer Curtis Martin, a former Jet. I'm sorry, I can't remember Curtis Martin. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a former Jet. Oh, God. The National Father's Day... Well, it had to be... It had to be... Uh, it had to be the Republicans in Congress to uh, pull the strings to get him to win that award. But you never know these days, you know, with the Democrats in Washington. Uh, continuing with Governor Christie. Yeah. We, he's, a lot, he's in the paper here a lot today. Outrageous! <laughs> that was my first thought when I read the headline. How can Governor Christie justify giving his staff such high raises when taxpayers have been advised that homestead rebates will not be paid out. Not even to seniors who depend on them due to budget restraints. Crony capitalism. Yet he has the nerve to increase staff raises. Six members will now make over $100,000. You see, folks, when hurricane, after Hurricane Sandy or Storm Sandy did damage and Christie was going around hugging people that lost their homes and seniors and taking walks with people and holding their hand, it's all bullshit. I certainly understand why members of the Communications Workers of America protested cuts their members will be subjected to. Eh. And he is notorious for giving your taxpayers' money to his rich friends. Yeah, yeah, notorious. yeah. Notorious. Not just nothing new. Not just the drop there. in the bucket. Billions. You know. Billions. Oh, but there's no money for the poor. That's correct. There's no money for food pantries. That's there's correct. no money for Planned Parenthood. There's no money for welfare. There's no money for unemployment extensions. There's no money for nothing. But there's plenty of money. Him There's plenty friends. of money to subsidize big businesses. There's plenty of money to go to wars. Yep, that's of right. choice. Ninety-three. Not necessary. I think it's ninety-three billion dollars a year goes towards uh, uh, corporate subsidies. That's taxpayers' money, right? That's great. Well, who else is paying it? Not them. Republicans. We are now millions of dollars spent on wars. We're in a war where we've been in for 13 years in a backward country. That that bogus uh, G.W. Bush war in Iraq could have eradicated uh, the, deficit the deficit and poverty in, in America. <laughs> we've been we've been able to, uh, as far as money is concerned, eradicate poverty in this country many times before. It's never been done, and it will never get done. They simply do not care. 
Except oh. when except when it comes time to get a real Wait a second. Real they care about embryos and fetuses, do they not? And fertilized eggs. Well, that's a fertilized egg. And and, and they stu they don't realize that life begins begins with the first breath as in Adam. <laughs> They don't realize that. That's what the Bible says. But anyway, it's time for the Reverend Dr. Yeah. Uh, uh, William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch, and I will join William H. Morrow III right now, followed by our commercial, and then back to the show. Man, how about how about that? Uh, back to tomorrow. <clears throat> I I just can't get over uh, Walton of Walmart. I I just can't get over him stiffing his people. Yeah. For a lousy stinking drop in a bucket salaries that he pays out. Which is tax deductible. Which is tax deductible. Oh, but if he's not paying taxes, then he's not getting any savings. Oh, uh, yeah. Labor's tax deductible, people. All right. And then they cry with crocodile tears. Uh. All righty. Okay, we're here with William H. Morrow III. Now, Bill, you were telling me a story, a very interesting story about a man who resuscitated a squirrel? Re a pool repair guy. It was on the news today. It was absolutely wonderful. It was, uh, he found the poor little thing floating. Dead. Wow. He brought it up. He did everything. He laid it over a, a plastic pipe. And he, he he wasn't sure what to do. He wasn't empty. <coughs> so he squeaked, kept squeaking. You could hear him talking. Come on, little fella. Come on, baby. Come on. And the poor little, after a while, he got a little bit and he threw up some water. And he wow. laid it in his helmet. And then he saw it moving. And it, it, it was so dazed and out of it. it oh, God. Just like a human would, would be. Well, it's a life. But what he I'm was saying, like he, he was working his fingers on the squirrel. He wasn't sure how to do it. Similar so to the hands. He squeezed it very lightly around. He, he said, I'm not sure where the ones are on the squirrel. And it, it came back to life. And uh, oh, the cameras were there filming it. It was just wonderful. It was, well, with a human, they usually do compressions on the on the uh, diaphragm. Well, the the area. new story on CNN. The diaphragm. We did right. talk to a veterinarian afterwards. I said, what should you really do? And they said, well, go a little bit higher. You want to give 10 little compressions in this certain area they show that if you lean down and blow two breaths into the nostrils of the squirrel you know but they said this guy did a great job it came back to life oh it looks so wiped out wow it must he have he brought it back to life i bet it fell from a tree branch into they don't the pool know. They don't know. and couldn't get out. They don't know. This is a really great but story. He found it and he did everything he could and he succeeded. Yeah. I think to me, this, is, this guy's a hero. He is a hero. I think it is the way I love animals. Boy, God bless him. Com man. Compared to this other situation, this other photo and article I read about uh, another vile, evil human being that starved his dog almost to death and they found the dog with all the ribs sticking out. It makes. Okay. No, no, it, no, no I'm, I'm comparing a positive story that you told me. I mean, is this dog okay? The dog barely survived. Oh, it did survive. Barely, yeah. It was all the ribs were sticking out. It was completely. How can you do this? To well, starving an animal to me is abuse. Well, what about people that starve their children in their homes too? Right, exactly. Starving a life, animal or not, a life. I mean, this is. I mean, we were what cruelty and evil are in some people. They're not so, human. No. No, to me, that's a non-human. Yes, you have the organs of a human, but the emotions and the feelings. No, you're not a human. I know for the last couple of weeks we did touch upon animal rights and animal cruelty. They must be stiffer penalties for what right. you do to, to animals, pets. Uh, now I, I strongly have, I'm fir a firm believer in that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, there was another article uh, where this company, Foster Farms, that raises uh, chicken for meat, there was um, a huge salmonella case where many people got sick. Well, this, this, and this they did a. They, I haven't heard of this. Foster this, Farms. This yeah. week in the news? or what? Yeah, I, the, I didn't hear of this. This past week, yeah. Right. They uh, did a, a, a recall, of course. And the, um, but the the government, the U.S. government or FDA, they did absolutely nothing. They were they're investigating it, but they they're 
the fact is the, the people did get sick from salmonella poisoning from Foster Farms chicken. Are they sure? But the, but yeah, no, no, that's that's for sure. Let's trace back to them. So the government is has like this hands off uh, approach to the situation. There's no. Uh, uh, there's no fines being issued. How many, how many people got sick? Did any pass away? Oh, no, nobody died, but a lot of people ended up in the hospital. And uh, uh, it's, it reminds me of the case where they found tainted chicken from uh, mainland China. That what happened was China, to be greedy, of course. Lead content. Well, they were yeah. taking they were taking dead carcasses, chicken that had chickens that died of illnesses oh, or old age, you can't do that. and they were processing them and shipping them and exporting them. Well, that's been done over here, not with chickens, I don't think. Well, I'm probably wrong. I'm sure it has. We just haven't heard of it. But I heard, have heard of it being done with cat, cattle. Well, look at mad cow people. disease. Yeah. They were feeding, so, uh, speaking uh, of mad cow. So you'll, you'll do anything to make a buck. Yeah, they, they were grinding up sick ca <coughs> ca sick cattle or but don't you care old about cattle and feeding it to cattle. But what are you doing with it? So they don't have to buy feed. So the cows are getting You're sick. You're selling this. Don't you care about the public? Your customers. Who is your CEO? Is this guy? A moron? Yeah, I mean anything for a buck. And this is ridiculous. And we're talking about an animal that's herbivorous. It's it's veg ve vegetarian, a vegan rather. And you're 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 feeding it a cannibal diet. Oh, by the same token, let's be honest too. I don't eat veal because I don't believe in the way they do veal. It's cruel. Of yeah, course. I, I I will not do that. Uh, I know a lot of people also the same feel the same way. Uh, it's it's cruel. You don't treat an animal or abuse an animal. Just to stuff your gut. Absolutely. Even the way with these, these, you have free range, I think, chickens and hens now, too. But they just keep them in such tight little cages or pens or what have you. I just don't believe in abusing an animal or a person or any, anything for that matter. Well, there was a, a an even bigger story about titled, it, uh, what is What Exactly Is In Your Pet Food? A lot and of junk. It's horrendous. Well, wait, wait. There are some great brands out there. That, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the majority of what you're saying. Yeah, yes. great brands like Innova, uh, yeah. Newman's, yeah. Paul Newman's company, um, uh, maybe Iams. I know they had a recall. Right it's a very simple formula. You're giving us junk. Hey, why don't we do it better? Is that yeah. so hard? The public, not just pet food, any foods, anything, they are willing to pay a little bit more, sometimes a lot more, when they know the quality is there. But you know what they found? You know, Bes so besides besides uh, byproduct, which could be anything, could be roadkill, pate. Mm -hmm. Once you grind up something bad, you know, what you see is pate. It's a, it's a filler, more or less. It's a filler. It makes it thicker and more bulk. You know, they, they, they put so. meat in pet food uh, that inclu including... And how many of these things could possibly be cancer-causing, Jimmy? Yeah, well, including p food, processed foods for humans. They found uh, animals that had, uh, like, abscesses and tumors and, and actually had cancer, and they just, instead of discarding it and throwing it away, they ground it up. Everything ground up. But guess what else they found in pet food? We're talking about the, the cheaper brands. They found ground up in dog and cat food, they found ground up dog and cat meat. In other words, uh, cats and dogs that were cats and dogs that were euthanized oh, come on. from from animal shelters, they were this selling it. Right. You this believe? Is, this no, is not right. You see how greed, how far greed has, this has gotten? It's not right. Well, it, look up, like they always use the term old term used to be a horse gets old, it goes to the glue factory. Right. So I don't agree. I don't go for this stuff. I really don't. No. You treat those lives with honor. But just picture it. Somebody on top, probably a CEO of some somewhere, decided, hey, all these... Um, Who cares? All these dogs... And he said it's hot shot cocktail party. Yeah, all these uh, uh, dogs and cats that were euthanized from animal shelters, no, never oh, that. let's not just bury them in a no. mass grave. Let's grind them up and make yeah. money off yeah. it. And this is what they do. They grind up anything and put it in pet food, and then you're feeding it to your cat and dog. 
So you, then your cats and dogs get sick, get cancer, tumor. Then you got to take it to the vet and spend a fortune at the vet. You know, uh, it's similar to. I think there's um, there's a connection between the U.S. food industry and the medical profession. It's a revolving door. People eat toxic foods from the supermarket. They get sick. They go to the hospital. The, the pharmaceutical industry makes money. The hospitals make money. And you know, who? Now where does it stop and where does it end? End and, end and how does it end? Right. People have been complaining for decades over this, but nothing's getting done. And, the, and they're all run by CEOs. They're all run well, by... Some of the companies that try the alternatives to make it better. So what's going on? Yeah, where does it end? It's, it's true. I mean, it's despicable that uh, what is contained in these foods, it's toxic. Now, um, there was a, an, another article saying that Walmart better not uh, rest on its laurels because they got some stiff competition. Walmart has been paying um, poverty wages and from what I understand their sales have been falling for the for five straight quarters. Now Costco on the other hand pays its workers $21 an hour wait, wait, with where? record where? sales where? for three years. Not around here, they don't. Costco, well, I heard 15, but now it's 21. Mm, I don't think 21. so. Even this area where we are, no, I don't believe so. No. I, I'll no. have to check on this. I think the highest in the country right now is the one that was just passed this week. Where was that? Seattle, Washington. 15 an hour, that's the highest For in the nation. city of Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 15 an hour. But Costco... I, and I applaud them. But Costco does treat its employers, well, do, no, employees very well. You're right, but, with, but I think your figures are wrong. But benefits, right benefits, yeah. and everything. Well, uh, we discussed uh, weeks ago, one of the smallest hamburger chains, White Castle, I think after one month or 60 days, you get full benefits. Now, why can't the bigger chains, worth making billions, compete with that? Now, there are some small fast food restaurants that are regional throughout the country. There, oh, there's, a, there's a couple of cases where this, this man, I think it was Michigan, he decided to do the opposite of what everybody else does. He decided to pay his employees very well. He raised it to like 15 an hour. He's given them benefits. And what does it come down to what I discussed with you months ago? Lower your profit margin. McDonald's. It's simple. In Denmark. McDonald's yeah. in Denmark pay, does pay $21 an hour. So instead of making $10 billion a year, yeah. you make $8 billion a but, year. But guess how you're, much... You're still making big money. But, but their Big Mac is stop, like... Stop trying to please your stockholders all the damn time. Think of your people. Yeah. Without your people, without your business, you would have no stockholders. Lower your profit margin. Well, a lot of CEOs blame everything on the shareholders, which is bull. It's not the shareholders' fault. I told you that months ago with the, when I was building SuperTech and Jack Welch when he was still chairman of of a, a GE. So I'm not here to run this company to please my stockholders. If you don't like what I do, sell the damn stock. I'm here to run a company. It's that simple. Stop trying to please your shareholders. If they don't like it. Sell the stock. Sell the stock. We'll buy it back from you. Either way. But I'm tired of hearing your headaches. I've got a company to run here. It's that simple. Cut and dry. You don't like it. Sell. That's otherwise, like, otherwise, please just shut up. That's like a retail customer that has a history of trying to scam over the uh, the store. Uh, you know, by buying fine jewelry or a suit. And then they go to a wedding. They go to a wedding and then on. they return it. Yeah. Now, some companies like Lord and Taylor would return refuse that customer if they show a pattern of doing well, it's it. Co it's come around to that now. Now, the, that means the customer is not always right. Oh, well, that's just lip service. Customers are, well, it's also yeah. about the same token today with electronics. You never hear the term anymore. A picture never, uh, a picture never lies. No, it can lie any way you want it to lie. Sure. You can do anything. You can shape, Photoshop, do whatever you want to a photograph, a picture, what have you. Even video. So, you know, the old terms are, have gone by the wayside. Now, let's be honest here. They all have. Yeah. Now, incidentally, that McDonald's that's paying $21 an hour in Denmark, their Big Mac is only like 56 cents. So they're keeping their, their prices low and they're paying their employees a, a, live, a decent living well, wage. It's just not being greedy, too, it seems like. Well, I think what happens is when you take care of your employees, it shows they're them... happier. The happier they are, the better their output will be. It shows them that, that the, their employer, the company they work for, cares about them. But why is that happening over here? Then the person, therefore, loves, likes or loves their job. Why do so many over here hate their jobs? 
because they're not they're treated lousy. That's right. Why? It's the same corporation. Because of greed. Why is the greed different over there than it is here? Added American attitude. But they own the Americans own the corporation. Why aren't they making this worldwide, corporate wide? I think there I think it might be franchises that it is French, but you have to follow the corporate lead. It's yeah. not a contract. So but I don't but isn't it, that. isn't it funny how a European <coughs> the same company in Europe treats its employees extremely well and with respect, and the ones here treat them like garbage. Yeah, with threats. And threats. You call out sick, you're fired. You do this, you're fired. Everything you do this, you're fired. You do this, you're fired. Yeah. Oh, you oh, you want to, you have a wedding to go to? You're fired. Oh, you're yeah. where you're working at day. It's all threats. It's all threats. They don't work with you. Yeah. They work against you. And then a person, no wonder the turnover rate is so high. And then the person says, wait a minute, they treat me like shit, they pay me they pay me a dollar, and if they could get away with it, they'd pay, yeah. they'd pay me less. Right. And you on know top, that too. So. And on top of that, yeah, they will pay... They, they would if they could get away with it. If, they, if they can get away with bringing back slaves... they can pay you one or two dollars, they do it. They make this a sweatshop. Well, if, if they can get away with bringing back slavery, slavery, they will. With a heartbeat. What, what do you think? What do you think is happening with all this, uh, all the massive incarceration of people caught with marijuana? That's so they could get slave labor in privatized prisons. All these privatized prisons are, are started by corporations. They're getting legal slave labor. And what? And that. Where's it going to lead us to? Maybe a mob rule, maybe a revolution, maybe who knows? Remember, we're we're a nation that's only a little over two hundred plus years old. Ancient Rome and other societies lived well over oh, not lived. Existed longer for well over a thousand plus years and they fell. So let's not be too cocky, yeah. people. Sure. Okay? Let's not rest on our laurels like we're so damn great. We better learn from mistakes. No, our civilization is very short. And as they say, history tends to repeat itself, and you should learn from history. Yeah. But it appears we're not really learning much from history, are we? Now, there's a there's so. a correlation. Speaking about marijuana, there's a correlation between the politicians that believe that are against legalizing marijuana and the politicians that are in favor of um, deregulating these well, companies. The bottom, the bottom line is they don't have a clue what marijuana is. But, the, but these are the same people that are for privatized prisons. Well, so do you see the connection? Well, that, plus they're the same ones that say marijuana leads to other drugs. Nah. No, it does not, because I did smoke for decades, and no, it did, never did. I never did hard and drugs. And other celebrities came forth. And they, they, said, said, they said it's a hallucinogen. No, it is not. You don't hallucinate on grass. No, you do not. So they make up these fake things. Well, this is the same government that in the 50s told students with nuclear, if a nuclear bomb goes off, duck and cover. Yeah, you get under your school desk, nothing stops radiation like a school desk. So this is the same government that told them lip, that. Lips, it's telling us now, lip service. you're going to hallucinate, it's going to lead to heart of drugs. No, it does not. Oh, like that old Reefer Madness movie? Yeah, Remember yeah, how it's ridiculous that? Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's, uh, it's like... Uh, but you know what's sad? The majority of people are ignorant, sadly to yeah. say. And they believe what they are told. Remember what I said months ago? There are very few shepherds, but a whole lot of sheep. They follow and they believe everything they're told. Well, they call them sheeple. That's, yeah, the, that's yeah. the, the new word, sheep. I never heard that, but that's good. Pe people and sheep. I've never heard it, that's good. They're, but they, you know, they, they believe what they're told. Yeah. If you tell them blah, 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 See what I tell you? Whatever's on mainstream media. No, well, I told you. Yeah. What? How do you know? They said so. The government said so. Lady, wake up. And there's so much, so much actual news going on that the U.S. media does not report at all. You know, it's. Uh, well, unfortunately, have other media sites too, like the BBC or what have you. And, uh, yeah. But you've got to give the USA media great credit, like CNN. They expose so much. Corruption. They were the host. They were the host of the old Larry King show, right? For, for yeah. over 25 years. Well, they are known years. as the network of record because they are balanced. They give opposing views both sides. Whereas you look at the other two 24-hour networks, they're the ones left, ones right. So you, you can't beat CNN and its sister network HLN. They are wonderful. A HLN, you said? Headline News. They call it HLN. Oh, okay, Headline yeah. News. They sure do. So they are wonderful. Fantastic. They have wonderful people. Tremendous people. Yeah. So. Well, um, you're right about that. There's too many. There's too way too much bias going on with other 
programs well, you know, of the like state. Like CNN, HON, where they present both sides. Yeah. If they bring you on as a Democrat, they'll bring me on as a Republican. They'll give opposing views. Yeah. They won't just give one side. They <clears throat> present both. Was Crossfire a CNN show? That's a CNN show as well. I used to, I used to enjoy that quite a bit. It's back. Great. And it's as good as ever. Different people, but it's as good as ever. So Fascinating, uh, naturally entertaining show to watch. It's confrontational and debate. They make provokes thought. And they give you facts. Make you think. What's going on? They present, yeah. here's what's happening. What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. This is right. This is wrong. Blah, blah, blah. They opposing views. And it's not some fake reality show. No. It's opposing views. Which should not be called a reality people show. people that are in the industry. The politicians, the reporters, what have you. Mm -hmm. Guests. General, retired generals. Or generals that are still active. I mean, in the military. Uh, what else do you want? Yeah. But, um... You know, it's all an attitude because if if you treat your employees like human beings and and you care about them, they're going to care about their performance. I remember with my job back in there. They're going to care about their when job. When I was with this company called Supermarkets General at the time, when I said, ever since you've been here, me, me, the men are singing and whistling in the aisles. I said, to your point. What's your point? Yeah. I said, uh, look at your productivity output sheets. They're seven, eight days ahead of schedule. It's never been done before. So that's so, so does that mean an employee has so what do you to mean? Yeah. has to look miserable? You're complaining so because they're happy and their output is incredible. Yeah. So but, your point? Because they're not happy. And I warned them, I said, you keep your crap up. These men will pull a you uh, a unit slowdown. Sure enough they did. Because we, we used to go out to lunch, and I'd go out to lunch with the men. Man, I don't believe in this enemy, we versus them. I'm management, they were union. I don't care about that crap. I said, look, guys, you, you, you're, you're seven, eight days ahead. Take, take an extra 20, 30 minutes, relax. And when we got back, I got chewed out. I said, for what? So what do you want from these guys? There's no work to be done. The work order sheets from corporate headquarters aren't any because they're so far ahead of schedule. What do you want them to do? Well, have them sweep or clean or whatever. I said, you better stop that's this That's not crap. their job, you know. You better stop this right now. That's maintenance you know, job. You know, the union would, would, yeah. the union would come down on that, uh, on, on, on him for saying yeah. that. But you see what I mean? Bad management. And I just give you one, one little example. That's a perfect example. And how many more hundreds or maybe thousands of examples around the U.S. or the world? Well, in my experience, for sure. some reason, Bill, many supervisors or stupid advisors... Should not be in that position. Well, they think if you're smiling, talking, jo or joking, that or laughing, that you're not working. So if you look miserable, you're a phenomenal employee. You think it's misery likes company? You think these managers are miserable and they don't want to see other people well, smiling? Well, I think that's possibly part of it. I think the bottom line is they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to manage. They don't know what management really entails. Yes. Yeah. Well, most, mostly line. retail managers they are like that. They think everything's, everything to manage is cracking a whip. That's not what managing is about. It's about teaching. It's like being a quarterback, a coach, instructing, teaching, leading, guiding, not cracking a whip berating him every little move you make that's wrong or yeah. you're a minute or two back late coming back from lunch so get on them crack that whip well that you, is not what it's about you mentioned the right attitude in running a business and uh, treating people right there's a show called undercover boy oh, that's great many yeah. many presidents and ceos that's from great. that show and, seem and, to care and right? they don't know but some of these guys don't have a clue how many of them at the end of the show said, I never knew this was going on? Well, as CEO Hoss, should you know what's going on within your organization, yeah. your corporation? What do you mean you had no and, idea? And the employees he got to know that had severe personal problems, they help them out. They help they, them they out. They give them money. They give them a car, a house, whatever. They, they send do. them on a vacation. But the bottom line is, yeah. if you're CEO, why don't you know? Where? And, and granted, maybe you don't know. But you should know, and where's your staff? You should have a staff that's out there scouring well, his, and reporting back to you. His, We've got problems here. Yeah. We've got trouble here. His branch managers and, and staff at different locations, were some of them were abusive, and he didn't know about it. Are they? <laughs> that's the case. Some of them were very abusive. Well, you got to let your people know that, that your, your phone calls to corporate really do get answered. And you don't get punished for Most it. Most people you hear, you tell them to call corporate, oh, they'll do, they won't do anything. They won't do anything. If they know that, yes, that's an open-door policy, yes, your calls will be heated. Right. 
and listen to them. And if action, if the corporation mm -hmm. takes action, and word spreads fast, you can always go to court. And if your immediate supervisor takes it out on you that you ratted him out, so to speak, hey, you can call open, corporate again. We have an open door policy here. Now, yeah. you're complaining about what I instituted. I I instituted an open door policy, and you're bitching about it. Oh, you're in trouble. Then that, then your, then that supervisor is is bucking company policy. Mm -hmm. He's he's going up against corporate. He's trying to cover up. Right. So I, so he's trying to torture. I, let me run my little quote sweatshop here, but don't you dare, dare yeah. tell anyone. Yeah, he's torturing the poor uh, employee. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Just, it's just a lot of BS. It really is. There's yeah. so much that goes on. Really, it is. But anyway, thank you very much, William H. Moore. The Jimmy, as always, buddy. Until next time. Bye bye. There you go. Thank you. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay. <clears throat> we are back. Jack. Jack. I just want to thank William H. Morrill III for a very invigorating show. It was a pleasure meeting with him as always, and and you saw a promo by William H. Morrill, and this is what you got to do. The very best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. Okay, now we will sink our teeth back into these readings. Because we started late on the readings. Because we were so... We were on a roll, man, with some really great topics at the beginning of the show. You see recently that the uh, railroads have had a lot of accidents with blowing up of oil tankers and this that and the other thing yeah killing people and stuff well the US railroads forced to turn over details of their volatile crude oil shipments are asking states to agree not to disclose the information but some states are refusing saying that the information should not be kept from the public. Federal officials last month ordered railroads to make the disclosures after a string of fiery tank car accidents in North Dakota, Alabama, Virginia, and Quebec, mm -hmm. where 47 people died when a runaway train exploded in Lac Magantic. The disclosures due Saturday at midnight include route details, volumes of oil carried, and emergency response information for trains hauling one million gallons or more of crude oil. BNSF Union Pacific and CSX want agreements that the information will not be publicly shared. They don't want you to know that they are hauling dangerous materials through your town. So and then you could die. It's all part of deregulating corporations. Profit over people and the planet. Absolutely. That's what it is. There's your capitalism for you that uh, Bill Clinton was promoting. Despite our, how does he talk it? Despite our, uh, 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 all of our faults, we're still, the capitalism is still the best. 
That's correct. I do. I don't do a good Clinton. Bill Morrow does a, a, an outstanding Bill Clinton. Pope Francis. Oh yeah, he's a. I'm a fan of his so far. Has led a pep rally to boost faith at Rome's soccer stadium. Packed oh. with more than 50,000 Catholics who follow charismatic movements which he jokingly likened to samba dancing. He's a cool pope, man. He's hip. He's a cool pope. I could dig this pope. Francis told the faithful in Olympic Stadium on Sunday that the devil wants to destroy the family, which he described as the domestic church. Well, yes, but he's also destroying the family structure on a small scale in the home. <clears throat> Bishops worldwide will meet in Rome in October to discuss problems afflicting families. Francis told the crowd that when he was Buenos Aires Archbishop, at first he did not share the way the exuberant charismatic Catholics prayed there. Yeah, I thought it was more like a samba school. I don't, I don't go for all the emotional boogieing and jumping up and down. To me, that's that's showing off your faith. It's. Uh, it, it, it's, it's more about the, uh, it's more about you ego, you know, than it is yes, about the Lord. Yes, it's what the uh, yeah. Sepnuckies and the uh, yeah. Pharisees did in ancient Israel. I, I, humility is very important to God. To God, yeah, you, yeah. Not to men. No, to God. Yeah, humility is pretty important. God can only teach. If you approach him as a baby, there's nothing harder to do than have a person unlearn something. Yeah, you have to be open to him and his teachings. Open mind! You have to have a very open mind. A free, independent thinker with an open mind. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church in Ireland is facing fresh accusations of child neglect after a researcher found records for 796 young children believed to be buried in a mass grave beside a former orphanage for the children of unwed mothers. Uh, the researcher, Catherine Corliss, said her discovery of child death records at the home run by Catholic nuns in Tuam County, Galway, suggests that a former septic tank filled with bones is the final resting place for most, if not all, of the children. Talk about the Catholic version of, uh, of um, it, 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 radical Islam. I mean, they were throwing them in the septic tank as after they died. I, is this punishment because they they came from uh, unwed, unwed families? Yeah, this is real. This is right wing religious cultist no, crazy, crazy stuff. Crazy yeah. stuff, man. Yeah. Church leaders in Galway said they had no idea. So many children who died at the orphanage had been buried there. Oh, nobody had any idea about anything and said they would support local efforts to mark the spot with a plaque listing all 796 children. Holy mackerel. That's despicable. It's always good to have recognition after you're dead. A mass grave of children in a septic tank of 
over 700 kids that were di that died and were neglected at the same time, right? Uh, because however, maybe they didn't die of natural causes. These were babies and toddlers. So, so if they're all dying, there must be something going on. But the children, the children are innocent. The children should not suffer for the uh, the actions of the parents. And then again, and then, then again. It's none of the nuns' business uh, what, or it's none of the church's business. And aren't they supposed to be about forgiveness? Yeah. yeah. What, what if a woman uh, is doing what she's doing in her private life? How she lives her life? Jesus admonished in the New Testament to visit the prisoners. Well, it's not their place. How many Republicans are going to do that? None. None. Yeah. County death records show that the children, mostly babies and toddlers, died often of sickness or disease in the orphanage, which the Bon Secures Sisters operated for 35 years. To throw them in prison. From 1926 to 1961. They don't have medical care in Ireland? Maybe not to unwed mother's babies. There you go. The building, which had previously been a workhouse for homeless adults, was torn down decades ago to make way for new houses. A 1944 government inspection recorded evidence of malnutrition among some of the 271 children then living in the Tuam orphanage alongside 61 unwed mothers. I think the, um, the secular law, law enforcement, uh, should definitely get involved with uh, uh, nuns and priests and you know clergy people breaking the law the death records cite sicknesses diseases deformities and premature births as causes elderly locals recalled that the children attended a local school but were segregated from other pupils until they were adopted or placed around age seven or eight into church-run industrial schools that featured unpaid labor there you go. and abuse. Slave labor. There you go. There you go. Greed, greed, greed. In keeping with Catholic teaching of the time, out of wedlock children of fallen women fallen fallen women were denied baptism so it's it, they're they're playing judge they're they're judging these women and the children and if they died at such facilities they were denied a christian burial they're playing judge again the guilty judge ye not Lest he be judged. You're guilty of, of um, what would you call mass murder? You would call it a mass murder. Uh, neglecting a child's uh, basic needs and letting them die for your own personal reasons, that would be, uh, that would be uh, mass murder. Were they arrested? No one was arrested. No one was arrested. This is after the fact. This happened years ago. They, they arrest... Uh, they probably found the bones in the septic tank after they're trying to build the new buildings. Yeah, but they arrested... Uh, they arrest mm -hmm. murderers individually for committing murders... Uh, well, who the hell are they going to arrest? ...many years ago. Their mothers typically were ostracized by society, even their own families. If you go back into the history of the, uh, was it a convent? What was it exactly? Convents. You go back in the history, you see who worked there, you go, 
knock on their door, probably and dead, just, and you just say you're under arrest. If they're dead, then they have to answer to God. If they're not dead, you arrest them. You're guilty for murder. You knock on the next door. You're guilty of murder. You're under arrest. And you throw them in a the damn prison for the rest of their lives. <gasps> Solutions are really not complicated in life, you know, it's, it's all about common sense most of the time. Unfortunately, most uh, solutions are political. And that sort of puts a bug uh, in the uh, ointment. Like I said before, <laughs> when I, I bucked heads with you, you can't fight the proven truth. Yes, you can. Just because you say Republicans and Fox News do it every single day. They, they, oh, no, 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 they can lie. Well. They can lie, but somebody who knows the truth can, can embarrass them and disprove them. Ah, someone who knows the truth. And but can, unfortunately, and that truth someone usually comes from the outside. And you know what they care about outsiders? They don't. So what you're saying is the media will not, will not give face time to the truth even when Sayer. they hear the truth from one of their own, they ostracize him. Yeah, like if you're not right-wing enough, yeah, exactly. like in other words, you're Republican, but you're a little too moderate for them. Uh -huh. Or maybe you're not quite as, as far to the right as they would like you to be. Mm -hmm. Then they boot you out. Now, right now, they have, you know, the, the, the law allows uh, people to carry guns anywhere they want to go. Where? So now they're going into chilies and, and restaurants and stuff with AK-40s, uh, 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 you know, strapped to their uh, shoulders. What are they paranoid? Why are they so paranoid? Yeah, but paranoid. Where? What if? What if they go into these places? We don't know if they are good men and women with guns maybe they or want to bad ones. Maybe they want to shoot up innocent yeah. people and children and women, yeah. women and... That's very frightening, isn't In, it? Innocent citizens, yeah. But they are exercising uh, their Second Amendment. Yeah, but it could be a nut, ready to kill people. Yeah, so maybe I should be able to exercise one of my amendments and kick them the hell out of there. That's insane. Like uh, Jim Arness did in Gunsmoke, Wyatt Earp in Dodge City, and etc. You come into town, check you your, check your guns. Check your guns. Yeah. Like if you come in the saloon, and the, the, which was, well, the saloon back in the wild, wild west was often a, a poker parlor and a bordello upstairs bordello, yes. and the bar. Yeah. It was three in one. Mm -hmm. Check your guns. It's so, very easy to get hot-headed and want to pull your rod out and kill somebody. Oh, just think about it. You know, road rage, uh, getting into an argument with yeah. somebody in a, it could be a restaurant. There was a f uh, video up there on uh, 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 Facebook last night. This uh, guy, he was uh, 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 a black guy. He started his engine of his car. I guess he was going to back out of his parking space or whatever. This woman started on him because you scared my kids with your ignition and etc. And then she's on the phone and she's calling her husband. And her husband, he's, she's calling him a nigger, a nigger, a nigger, a nigger. He's very calm. He's, he's recording it all with the video camera, you know. And uh, she's oh, going nuts. I didn't listen to it. Oh, go back it and was, listen it was to a, it. It was a woman with like dyed black yeah, hair. Black hair, and she yeah, was two ugly, kids. ugly kid, ugly Yeah, man. and she's yelling and screaming at him. What did he do, though? She's calling him a racist, and she's the racist. But what did, what did he do wrong? He did nothing. He started his car up. So he's innocent. She's calling her lawyer. She's calling her husband. For her what? Husband, husband's going to come up and beat the hell out because of him. Because he's black? Yes. But he, he has a right to get in his car and, and leave? Yes, he does. So she, but she, she has she, a right, she, you see, that trumps his right. So she just felt like... She's white. She just felt like attacking him. Yeah. If it's still up there, go and watch it. Was this one of the crazy uh, red states? It didn't say nothing about a state. Does she have an accent? Like a southern accent? I don't know. Now, what, what state did, did they allow you to walk into a, a... All of them. A restaurant? All of them. It's a Supreme Court decision. So right here... right to carry. So right here in New Jersey. You don't they need a, in Wendy's. You don't need a special permit. Oh yeah, you have the permit for the gun. So you can, so you can get a permit. No, you've got a permit for the gun. You but can carry it anywhere. You don't need a permit to carry. 
when you buy the gun, you get a permit for it. It's the right to carry, which the Supreme Court said you had under the Second Amendment. You can carry your gun anywhere. It wasn't always like that. Of course it wasn't. Neither was Citizens United. Neither was McCutcheon. So what Where you, corporations so what are you, people, what, my friend. What you're saying is that now here, here in New Jersey, or New York State, or New York City, even worse, uh, if a person already has a firearm, they can now bring it with them in their car and keep it in their glove compartment, under their car seat. They can strap it to their shoulder in Wendy's. It's all 50, Aren't you hearing what I'm saying? All, hey, don't get arrogant with me. All 50 states, they're allowed to do this. I believe all 50 um, states the reason have to why believe what the I, the Supreme Court says. The reason why I'm echoing what you're saying is because it's incredible to, of be, course it's to incredible. believe it. It's so, the last few decisions by the Supreme Court are incredible. But they're there. So if you're, if you, if you're in a state where you can just walk into um, a Walmart or where they, you know, uh, uh, a big store where they sell guns and you know, and uh, especially you're in a, in a red state, you go up there and you know, you, you buy the gun and uh, do they do a background check very thoroughly? No. Well then any lunatic can buy it. And have been. What do you think all these shootings are about? So, it, the right wing says it's your constitutional right That's to bear correct. arms, even if you're crazy. That's correct. Interesting. That's correct. And they don't want you to have, they've been blocking it, a, uh, a right to check before you buy the gun. So, you know, what's, what's to stop somebody from trying to pass a law that says uh, if you're a, a little crazy lunatic genius and you, you get the instructions how to how to build a small atomic bomb online, that you have a right to build your own little atomic bomb. Because it's your your right to, to to build it, your hobby. The NRA and the Republicans <laughs> block anything but, that would involve. Well, I mean, I mean, infringing your rights. I mean, on gun. You have. What's the difference between putting an AK-47 or, or or an Uzi in possession of a nut and having a nut? build a little atomic bomb the size of my stainless steel thermos it it's the same thing it's it, it, it's 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 potential it probably can build it and walk into Wendy's with it okay it it's it's a tragic crisis waiting to happen it, it, it it's a ticking time bomb they you they know I mean it's that. the same thing you got a nut with they a, don't think that. the potential for mass destruction they think that if they have any kind of checks that the government will be able to come against you and take your guns away. Okay? Look, and I'm, they need their guns I'm not because someday the government may come after them and they will have to fight the government. Yes, you know what? It's you very, see what happened no, with Mr. It's very Clive and Bundy. It's very important for the American citizen to be able to bear arms, but not nuts. Not lunatics. Well, how do you know when they're nuts when we don't have background checks? There in lies the question. <laughs> and we ain't gonna have them because they keep blocking it. So you see what happened why with would Mr. They want Clive and Bundy? What? Oh yeah, what's up with him? They backed down. The government backed down. Because he was uh, the militia. Because he was a right winger, and and, and the Republican. we don't know the reason why. The point is, it was a bad decision, which will now embolden the militias further. Yes, if they can get away with that, then they'll try to get away with something bigger That's and correct. bigger and bigger. That's correct. That's correct. Very fascinating show this week. Very Some of our country's richest corporations have lobbied to turn our national wage laws into Swiss cheese. Did I, did I tell you this was an invigorating show this week? Riddling them with special loopholes to escape paying even today's miserly minimum wage. 
Hmm. This amounts to wholesale robbery of restaurant workers, farm workers, domestic workers, taxi drivers, and pro football cheerleaders. Yes, even super rich NFL football teams pay peanuts to their highly publicized cheerleading squads who are showing their panties on television for the benefit of the team. They're taking one for the team. <laughs> Members of the Oakland Raiders squad calculate that their pay works out to less than five dollars an hour. That's not good. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're paid really cheap, the cheerleaders, the NFL cheerleaders, and possibly other major sports team cheerleaders. While the Cincinnati Bengals cheerleaders, who bear the added burden of being called Bengals, Bengals. are Bird. paid two dollars and eighty-five cents an hour. It's like waitresses. It's like waitress wages. And they're, they're very, very pretty. I've seen the Cincinnati Bengals cheerleaders. They're very pretty. I mean, like, like, like what about the Dallas uh, Cowboys? Uh, uh, what about the Dallas Cowboys, buddy? No, facially, the Cincinnati Bengals cheerleaders are very beautiful facially. They, they, you know, a lot of a lot of cheerleaders, they have a great body, but they have an average face. You know, but these girls are like exceptional. Astonishingly, a recent ruling by the Labor Department says that this does not violate federal law. Oh, gee, of course. Of course, they're going to they're going to support the uh, or the owners of the teams. Why? Because the sports industry got its cheerleaders categorized as seasonal amusement employees. They're still employees of the team. They're employees. A loophole that exempts them from our national pay rules. Maybe that's why many pro wrestlers get stiffed when they first start. No state, the state athletic commission is not really involved anymore. Fed up, members of the Oakland Raiderettes cheerleading squad have sued the team for gross labor violations. Nationwide strike, cheerleader strike. Yeah, but why? Was why it because why they're getting two dollars and change an hour. Exactly. But who put that law into effect? Who, who? Uh, why is it that uh, the people, when they want to change a law, get a law, or whatever, they have to demonstrate, and right. they have to demonstrate with hundreds and thousands of people. But the business just has to walk into the congressman, the senator's office with a little money and some envelope. And guess what? His law gets into effect. Let me tell you something. These poor girls, football season is mostly during cold weather months. <gasps> These poor girls have to work hard, dancing around. Show you know, some legs. Just to, just to keep warm. Right, with bare legs, they don't want you to wear too much. That's another thing. They actually tell you if you know, and if you have large breasts, they want you to dress so you can make them jiggle. They do not, yeah, true. They do not want you to wear much at all, and it's freezing out there. And they're they have to constantly dance just to keep from catching pneumonia, for God's sakes. And and they get a lousy two dollars and change an hour. You'd think the billionaire owners of these sports for exposure. That's why they do it. Yeah, would be embarrassed to be exposed as cheapskate exploiters of women. No CEO or rich person is embarrassed by being a, 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 a skin flint and a cheap bastard. Instead, the Raiders maintain that thanks to a sneaky, mandatory arbitration proviso in the ladies' employment contracts, the cheerleaders must submit any complaints to a private arbiter. And the private art of arbiters are in the pocket of the businesses. It's 
So it's a kangaroo court. No justification. There will be no justice. Okay? Kangaroo court. And who would that be? Who would be the arbiter? Why? The NFL commissioner himself! Whose $44 million a year salary is paid by the team's owners. Which is why these indefatigable women are challenging not only the wage abuse, but also the abuse we all suffer from absurd corporate rigged forced arbitration. I would like to say hello to uh, two friends of mine that run sports related uh, agencies. Uh, Raven Rose Sports Notes and uh, Blogger Ball Gettleman of the uh, state of Ohio. They're located there. I want to say hi. And I also want to say hi to my very close and dear friend uh, Miho of Osaka, Japan. And I would like to also say hi to uh, uh, personal trainer extraordinaire from Southern California, Mr. Rick Brown, uh, the star of steel stone and sugar right. organization who are doing um, um, nationwide um, workshops teaching the ancient art of mace swinging and I greet you sir did you scramble to get your taxes done this year scramble yeah I know the government, the government, didn't they hold off last year and pay late? I yeah. Know. I don't mind paying what I owe. But I hate having to cover the taxes that should be paid by the likes of J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Caterpillar, etc. Those are just two of the astonishingly profitable corporations that walk their tax tabs each year. There's a hell of a lot more than them. Oh, yeah. Putting the cost of everything from the military to our national parks onto the rest of us. This is a great article. And, and when you're done, mention this great gentleman's name. This is Jim Hightower's newsletter called The Lowdown. Really? Ah, Jim Hightower. Yeah. Salute you. CEOs and their congressional hi hirelings wail about the punishing tax rate of 35% assessed on corporate profits. But most corporations pay nowhere near that. The latest assessment by the Government Accountability Office found that U.S. corporations pay an average tax rate of only 12.6%. Huh. The poor pay 15 Ah, 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 ah. Uh, ha, ha. I wouldn't even ring the bells for that. They do that through ridiculous loopholes in our tax laws. Take, for instance, the subsidy for corporate criminals. J.P. Morgan Chase was fined more than $20 billion last year. Its honchos deducted that punishment from their corporate tax bill, claiming it as a cost of doing business. That's why you never, never find the rich. You find a more fitting punishment for the rich, because they can pay any fine. And if they're a corporation, well, they take it off their taxes as a cost of doing What business. about making them pay retro uh, all the years that they've gotten away with not paying any taxes and plus fines for those years going back maybe but decades? But I just said it's a cost of doing business. It hurts them nothing. But, but look, does not well, look, at all, look at all of the poor people you can help by getting all that back money from poor the Poor people rich. ain't getting the money. The government's getting the money. 
when they tax the rich? Well, depending on no. who's in charge. This is a fine. It has nothing to do with a tax. Oh, I'm it's talking fine. about. I'm talking about when the right person gets elected, who's not a corporatist. One person. The hell is he going to do? Well, no. You have to. You know. You have to hope that if you get enough Democrats in Washington, that they'll do the right thing. Hopefully. They've been electing Democrats. They happen to be corporatists. So they ain't going to do the right thing. Well, like you said, when, when uh, Obama first took office for the first two years, we could have had a lot of things done. And the Democrats were in charge of everything. But, but they were corporatists. Right, so that's... So they, how, how come we even inspected anything? So forget about single-payer public option in health care. Forget about taxing the rich. Forget about the... Uh, 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 regulations? No, none of that happened. Yeah, you're a very smart cookie. Meanwhile, Caterpillar Incorporated quietly shifted some eight billion dollars in profits into a Swiss subsidiary to avoid paying more than two billion owed to our country. Even though this subsidiary has only 65 employees and neither makes nor sells spare parts. Caterpillar was able to channel 85% of its international parts profits into what amounts to a tax shelter. The elite sniff that they're merely making rightful use of the deductions allowed by tax laws. But it's their lawyers who wrote those laws to legalize their thievery. We pay for their wrongdoings, their fines, and their lawyers. Huh. Well, sir, you, you, this week you're, you're on a roll, that's for sure. You, you don't sound very optimistic about our future. Never did. Never will. We have two choices. Either the Bible is correct, or we have, to we have a human annihilation yes. on the horizon. Or, or two choices. And or civil war. So I'm talking about death to the human species. I don't care how it comes about. Well, World War Three, atomic. World War Three. Well, hey, the nuclear the, weapons will be used. The uh, international troops are, are already in the Ukraine. I heard the British are there, and uh, you know, and uh, th this might escalate into World War Three. No, you don't think the Ukraine and Cri Crimea will be the not as not <coughs> not important enough. Oh. not important enough. Well, it, the com conflagration will begin in the Middle East, not in the Ukraine. Yeah, well, the Russians just want the Crimea Peninsula. I think that's what they want. Well, they want eastern Ukraine, too. As far as I know, they have put their people there. So they, so Vladimir so, yeah. Putin wants to take back the uh, all the, the, the Russian colonies that they uh, owned. Maybe maybe he wants to... Uh, well, he has to. lofty ambition. He maybe. would like to institute the Soviet Union again, but that ain't going to happen. Well, I think I think the Russian people were seems like they were better off overall when the during I know during the Soviet Union uh, when Leonid Brezhnev was in I I was told the things were prosperous for some yeah. for chess players <laughs> yeah well you know Karl Marx who was German. If they followed his system with no corruption, they were not they were not uh, communists. First, of all. yeah. Now there is very difficult differentiation between communism and socialism. But the Soviet Union was a Soviet socialistic republic of whatever. That was uh, uh, they were socialists. Stalin or was which it became uh, Lenin totalitarian? That okay. And there's the big rub. When did it start? During Lenin or Stalin? So, 1917. So. Lenin. I don't know who was in charge at that time. 
That's when it began. Okay. The Soviet Revolution. Okay. Now, according to Wilhelm Reich, maybe three or four years into that revolution, things were okay or proceeding on track. Yeah, when they but they became totalitarian. When they ousted the the czars and the czarinas, the Romanovs, and uh, and social, it became a socialist country. Well, they they claimed it was socialist. That so claimed. did the Nazis claim that they were socialists. That is true. Republicans claimed that they were socialistic too. They weren't. Yeah. They were corporatists just like everybody else. You know? Well, um, some experts claim that the United States, when it first began, was not technically a democracy. It never was. It's a republic. It's a republic. Yeah. yeah. But it's a republic democracy. Democracy is when all the people vote, and they get, they have the right to vote. I mean, look at India, the biggest democracy in the world. Uh -huh. Population-wise, and it's a fair, but it's a fair, honest election. If your vote does not count, is worthless, the corporations and the wealthy, the plutocrats, are in charge, then what is it worth? The fascists, fascism. What is it worth? Nothing. Nothing. That's right. And that's where we are today. The plutocrats, which, by the way, happens to be the title of my new article for Censored. And hopefully we will get a normal issue of Censored with plenty of the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's writings in it this time if he only puts his foot down like me like James P. Madonna um, yes it sounds very good and also that 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 information about Bill Clinton no Jimmy Carter I'm sorry Jimmy Carter that little tidbit about Jimmy Carter deregulation yes yes uh, how much time in the have? 70s Recently, my congressman, now this is New Jersey, yeah. Representative Rodney Freelandheitsen, a Republican of Harding in New Jersey, contacted constituents to <coughs> decry the Veterans Affairs hospital tragedy. He's right <coughs> that the VA must accept responsibility, deal with this swiftly and make changes to prevent it from happening again. I hope Congress will pass the VA Management and Accountability Act to ensure that this happens. I also hope Freeland Heitzen will pause and rethink his congressional record. He voted many times to deploy troops to Iraq and Afghanistan, yet voted against giving military units minimum rest periods between the deployments. He voted against job training programs for veterans and said no to the new GI Bill wow. and to legislation. <coughs> that would have provided military reservists the same health benefits as regular military. Big slap in the face to the veterans, to the troops. They get away with it, though. They get away with it. Then uh, there's no incentive for anyone to really enlist in the U.S. military. I don't see any incentive. That's beside the point. We're talking about the hypocrite bastards that are in control. Yes who pretend that they're for the military, who take every opportunity to go have photographs taken with them, like George Bush did. Mission accomplished! These are the people who are, th who the fools vote for, you know. Uh, and every time they can, they cut funding for the veterans. Because they're just using the poor souls in the military. They're, they're using mainstream might as well say. The elitists are using mainstream and even though 
we outnumber them tremendously. Uh, the people, what do they do? They believe the same lies, like Fox News, and they re-elect them, like they did in Wisconsin with Scott Walker and New Jersey with Chris Christie. They re-elect them. They and complain some, about their lives, but they still vote Republican. Some nut said up there, I believe it was on Drummond or Stosh or whatever. Yeah. Said something about the Koch brothers. And the guy says, well, I'd rather take the Koch brothers over a Democrat any day. Oh, really? Yeah. And what, This what, is the thinking that you got to do and with. What, what rationale does he have that, to come to that conclusion? There is no rationale. He, th he thinks his life would be much better over, with the Koch brothers in charge? He will, be so, re he will be reduced to the slave. He will be reduced to making maybe 50 cents an hour, but no benefits. He will be a slave. But actually, that money that he puts into his taxes won't go for somebody, a lazy bastard on welfare. Because this guy obviously is stupid enough to believe okay. verbatim what he hears on Fox News. He's actually a very stupid person. In fact, Freeland Heidson has voted against mu pretty much any bill to improve the lives of our soldiers and veterans. Maybe that's why the Disabled American Veterans Association Organization and veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars have given him low marks. Now Bernie Sanders has uh, John McCain on, on his side with this uh, problem. As the daughter of a veteran, my heart goes out to all who lost their loved ones in this tragedy. Those at the VA who are responsible for what happened should be booted out. These are unjust. They shouldn't have been put in. These are unjust wars, and all these people died unnecessarily. And representatives who say they support our military personnel but vote against them should be voted out. Yeah, right. That'll happen. Then how come? How come? Uh, I don't want to call them fools anymore. They're 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 beyond. The word is beyond foolish. It's exactly. Beyond, it's beyond numbskull. It's beyond. Exactly. It's beyond imbecile. It's it's. Uh, I don't know, I gotta think of a word that's more severe for these Americans that keep on re-electing Republicans. <laughs> that's a for sure. You are, it's like, it's like, um, it's like It's like I keep saying, they won't, they won't you like the Democrat because they're baby killers. It's like somebody. Second humanist. It's like somebody in Florida who is near the Everglades swamp and says, "Oh, it's so hot and humid. I brought my bathing suit. I'm going to take a dip." And then you go, "Are you out of your mind? It's infested with alligators." Oh, da 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 da. Well, there's a chance I might not get bit. Ah, it's so hot. I gotta go swimming. I gotta go swimming. Chomp. <laughs> this, this is the kind of mentality. This is the American. Yes, it is self-destructive. That's for sure. This is this is the type of Americans that re-elect any Republican. I don't care if it's the jerk-offs over in Kentucky with the uh, ugly turtle face, Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul. I don't care if it's. Uh, 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 where's Paul Ryan from again? Wisconsin? Wisconsin. Michigan? Oh, Wisconsin. 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 I'm sure he's buddies with Scott Walker. Yeah, I don't care if it's him or Chris Christie. Your vote for a Republican is like insisting that you gotta take your shirt off and take a dip. Hey, uh, Anthony uh, Bourdain on his show when he was in the Amazon, he was complaining constantly how freaking hot and humid it was yeah. and the and the and the bastard went for a dip in 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 the same waters where piranha live because he just had to cool off holy crap but hey you get my point you get my point
finish this up, please. Yes, we're going to go on to a lighter theme. Yeah, and then we're done, right? Yeah. I mean, how, how are we doing on time? One more? One more article? One more, I guess, is All right. suit the bill. All right. This is a Dear Abby. Ah, uh, you always got to do her. All right, go ahead. My husband, Mike, and I are young newlyweds and adjusting to our new life quite well. Good. However, while we both come from deeply religious families, we are both non-believers. Okay. Which has caused some strife within the family. Because the family was forcing it down their throats. Mike has several nieces and nephews, ages four to nine, who have asked us repeatedly why we don't go to church with them, since the whole family attends together. Their mother has made it clear <clears throat> that they do not want the children knowing there is another option besides Christianity. Mm, well, but I don't want to lie to the kids it's not... or ignore their questions. Is there a tactful way to answer their questions without stepping on toes? The problem is not Christianity. The problem is the churches man-made rules and hypocrites. All right, go ahead. But Christians like uh, the family here and mostly Republican so-called Christians, they believe that if people are exposed to something else, they will flee the faith. Good. So they fear. That's why they only want their brand of Christianity see, to be adhered to. See, in reality, Real Christianity is that one thick book they call the Bible. If you read that in your house, all these buildings are, that, that are called churches and all these TV evangelists, you know what I mean? And all these so-called pastors mean nothing because a person can misinterpret the Bible, a person can make up their own laws, you know, and, 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 and mislead people very easily. They can be misled. And they are misled. You know? Often. Good. Abby's answer. You could respond by saying your uncle and I have other plans. And if the kids ask what they are, tell them what you plan to do that day. If they ask why you don't come to church, like they do, tell them that because they are children, they need to learn about their religion. And they need, they need to learn the truth about what's really going on in their religion, as well as in politics. Stop sugarcoating for these kids. Everything. While I respect your in-laws' desire to practice their faith, I think it is unrealistic to try to keep children in the dark. Because as soon as they hit school, unless they are homeschooled or in a church-run school, they are going to meet other kids who worship differently or not at all. They're going to be exposed to everything and anything, especially today's kids that have access to the Internet, <coughs> as well as public schools. They will be exposed to everything, so you better. it's better to tell them about the realities of life, you know, I mean, um, it, it, it <laughs> But Republican conservatives want to keep things on a local, provincial level. I know what the elitists okay. and conservatives want. What somebody wants, uh, that doesn't mean they have to receive. There, there's such well, a word they, as no, there is such a word as what on what grounds do you want the, this to happen? I mean, you you have to got to you got to do the right thing in life. Make the right. They decision. have a way of getting their wants into law. Yeah, it's called getting paid off by corporate CEOs. Whatever it is, they seem to be very much better at it than Democrats. They have this okay? ability to um, to. Uh, use so-called family values 
as a uh, uh, a front and religion to, and religion to distract people looketh over there yes and don't pay attention to what I'm really doing that's correct it's a front that's smoke correct. screen of sometimes though facade. there are some that yeah. don't even know what they're doing oh there's blithering idiots that are that are Republicans that just followers just followers. Someone else does the work, supposedly, yeah, well, and they just do the believing. It's well, easy. Uh, um, Michelle Bachman and, uh, and Sarah Palin are not no rocket scientists, and uh, 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 Hasselfuck, Hasselbeck, Elizabeth, the the Gorgon, Medusa head witch, Hasselbeck. Well, you see, that's, she's no rocket scientist either. That's one of the problems today is she that know. Uh, people who know nothing, you know, usually in the old days, keep their mouth shut. If you open your mouth, then you look like a fool. But if you're a Republican, you can look like a fool every day. Well, today, these kind of people, they end up with megaphones. You know, and then they blur, blur, blur out their crap, and then there are people that actually believe it. Almost forgot. You see, people out there, I know you won't really pay attention, and, and you will vote Republican because you're, you're, you're lacking many brain cells. But and oxytocin. Oxytocin. See, the, but oxytocin is like you're feeling sorry for for the perpetrator. You're 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 giving them uh, too much benefit of the doubt. You know, it's like it's not hard hitting enough. They should be punished to the most severe extent that life can dish out. In America, we do not punish people with money who have money. Yeah. We do not do it. No, but you punish, you punish uh, a poor uh, a, a kid, like like that woman posted. A hey, boy, she got attacked. Uh, a black woman was making a speech. Um, at, at some event and she was talking about how impoverished black kids are thrown into prison for de for dealing marijuana meanwhile the, the the rich fat cat white men are making money hand over fist this is statistically with, accurate with drug trafficking <coughs> Excuse me. but they punish the poor s s kid from the ghetto and throw him in prison and th uh, you know and and, th and and toss away the key Meanwhile, the fat cats that are really making the money off the drug trafficking, the, the rich white fat cats, get away with murder. Correct. Get away with Don't get arrested. Correct. And uh, there were several um, you know, mm -hmm. people and some libertarians and some, you know, tea partiers that uh, accused her of using the race card. Playing, playing the, ra the race card. Playing the race card. Here we go again. She's playing. They're playing the race card again. Mm -hmm. But I thought what she said was true. It is true, statistically true. It's true. The kid, the poor kid that doesn't have a, a penny or a pot to piss in is, you know, trying to survive and he gets thrown in prison for something ridiculous like marijuana and... But it goes back to Nixon. The, the people on top are making money off this. It's a social engineering thing to keep the poor, the blacks, the whatevers, in jail, where they belong. You're talking about privatized prisons, slave labor. Well, at that time there were no privatized prisons that I know slave of. Slave labor camps. I'm just talking about the policy. You ever wonder, you ever wonder... I never wonder. Why, um, why all of a sudden they're starting to legalize marijuana? Well, I found out that Monsanto is getting ready to bring their genetically modified marijuana Virgin. from South America into the U.S. Bingo! It, if you thought it was too good to be true, all this legalized pot, well, guess what? It is. There's a greedy uh, uh, agenda behind it, and it's Monsanto's genetically modified marijuana. So what I'm trying to say before we stop for this week, there is no trickle-down economics. It's a lie. There is siphon up to the elitist economics. This is a siphon, by the way. Aquarium siphon, but a siphon nonetheless. 
siphon up economics to the fat cats, to the 1%. Never trickle down economics. Got that? Siphon, siphon, siphon. And then they stick it up your ass with no lubrication. <gasps> okay, you're done with that reading? I'm done. Okay, I just want to... I want to play a little Jews harp. Do you know any uh, no. a country song no. every word for word? I know no Jews. No, I mean a country western song. Do you know of any that we'd like to sing? No, that I would like to sing. Jack in the Box. No, Jack in the Box is. Jack in the Box bouncing around. Jack in the Box is. The Weasel. Pop goes the Weasel. Pop goes the Weasel. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this week's uncensored, hard hitting truth. We'll see you next time. I rate this show four stars. What do you think? Uh, there was a lot of deep, heavy-hitting, hard-hitting information in this we'll show. We'll see how many people watch it, comment on it, Pe buy the newsletter. People will actually, actually, the most unimportant Asenheine uh, shows and videos will go viral. Mm -hmm. I, I predict it. I don't have to be psychic, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just... The dumbing down of America. What can I say? Mm -hmm. See you next time. Well, you know, a dumbing down means that somebody was up there once. Some of them have never gone up there. So they, they've, been, they've been dumb all the time. In other words, what you're saying is in order to be dumbed down, you have to begin by being dumb to be, no, in the first place. No, at least smart. And then you get dumbed down. But most of these people are already dumb. They never get to be smart. Well, they're not. They're not. They don't seem to be independent, free thinkers with an open mind. How can you be an independent, free thinker if you have an ideology concerning Christianity? And how can you be such by believing ridiculous things from Fox News people? Well, or, don't forget, Fox Ru News is just a recent invention. What thing. about Rush Limbaugh's what about idiotic that? case statements? What about before, you know, Ru Fox News? Then you had Rush. And we had a lot of, you know, we, it's, it's the ideology itself that's the problem. And it goes... That captures these people's so-called minds. And it goes decades back. That's great. All right, say so long to these jabronis. So long, people. Hey. This has been a Megalife 21 production.